y'all, Scott here. I haven't checked on my birth certificate since last September. Yeah, I'm really falling behind, so let's see what it has in store for us. So, my name was just a placeholder until they thought of something better. And they never did. Nothing like an existential crisis to start your day. Playing a video game? Whatever. Learning about its existence, now I could do that all day. I love when new video games are revealed. Telling everybody what the hell you're working on. It's an art, and the way companies reveal their video game can be vital to its immediate success or failure. The build-up to the release of a game can sometimes be more memorable than the final product, just because there's a certain magic to it all. Not knowing everything there is about a game and being surprised when they showcase something you weren't expecting in the reveal trailer is satisfying and exciting beyond words. Of course, reveals can go haywire. Now, I don't think it's deliberate. I doubt marketing folks are in their board meetings going, All right guys, just finalized our reveal plan for the game. First, we f*** up. But it happens all the time. For every Twilight Princess reveal, there's a Randy Pitchford doing magic tricks to stall the reveal of Borderlands 3. For every Final Fantasy 7 remake trailer, there's a Diablo mobile game revealed when everybody wanted a true mainline entry. For every Baby Born, there's a Peggle 2. The showmanship is important with video game reveals these days. They need to have an amazing CGI trailer with great gameplay shown alongside it with epic music playing over it all. Bonus points if it's broadcasted live on stage with audience reactions. And they also need to be anything but this. But the quality and impact of a video game reveal only truly started to become important in the age of the internet. Back in the 80s and 90s, you just flipped through a Nintendo Power waiting to scream, Pack Watch! This section was dedicated to revealing what's coming soon, and that was the primary way of learning about new video games outside of TV commercials or just walking in the store. Now with the internet, this ensures more people are exposed to your game and word of mouth spreads much more quickly and easily, but you gotta make sure your game is worth talking about. You gotta ask, is this a thing people will not shut up about on social media? It was much simpler back then because you couldn't go completely crazy with revealing your video game. You can only really throw a couple of paragraphs and screenshots in a magazine, and that was probably maybe less expensive and stressful than putting together a three minute long CGI trailer including good looking and fun gameplay on a stage you have to rent out. But video games were becoming more than just some toy for kids to fiddle around with, and because of that they were deserving of a little more flair and pizzazz than just ink words. One of the first big introductions of a game was Super Mario Bros. 3, they basically made an entire movie just to reveal this game in North America. Alright, The Wizard. It's fine, it's not good, it's not terrible. It was supposed to come off as a heartwarming movie about a little boy named Jimmy with PTSD who becomes an amazing video game player. But it was just a 100 minute long Nintendo commercial with footage of Mario 3 at the end. Man, f the kid, is that a warp whistle? That was the only reason why people wanted to see it back then and the only reason why people may want to watch it now. But this was kind of the starting point for large scale video game reveals. As games became much more of a production and became more and more appropriate to put everybody in a stupid f***ing tent to show a Last of Us 2 trailer, damn it. But just because of a bombastic lead up to release, it doesn't say anything about the final product. Sometimes a bad reveal turns out to be a good game, and a good reveal turns out to be a bad one. Either way, you want to make sure your reveal falls in line with expectations of a game leading up to launch, or else people won't pick it up because they think it's going to be bad, or they'll be disappointed because it failed to live up to expectations. The adventure a video game goes through from reveal to release is always interesting. Except with Tetris 99, that thing just kind of came out. So let's talk about each step of the build up to a release and historic successes, failures, and how each step affects the final product. Everything generally starts with the reveal. Sure, you get some teases from developers, confirmation a game is in development, or stupid dumb stupid leaks, but the grand reveal, the first time they formally unveil their product, is the main starting point. Sometimes reveals can go well, and other times they can be Skyward Sword. I have war flashbacks to the Zelda Skyward Sword demo at E3 2010, and now technically we knew an original Zelda game was being created for the week before this. A new Zelda was confirmed in 2008, and concept art was shown off the next year, but 2010 was the first time we saw Skyward Sword not working in the flesh. Yeah, when you're using wireless controllers to demo a game still in development that's heavily dependent on motion controls, yeah, something like this was bound to happen. I will say, a lot of the elements of the reveal outside of the technical issues were well done. Miimoto appeared on screen and then was summoned on stage, I like that. And the quick teaser they showed beforehand was awesome. They show off elements of the previous 3D Zelda games until it shows off this game's new art style. See, technical issues can transform a game's fun announcement into off. Oh, that's a sacrifice you have to be willing to make by doing everything live on stage. This makes the reveal much more impactful, but just smacking some video online without any warning? I mean, that works too, and there's far less that can go wrong. Definitely less of a risk, but less showmanship with this route. Now, I'm confident saying if the demo didn't go haywire, this would have been up there as one of the best E3 reveals. Instead, it's one of the most notorious. How about reveals that don't tell you anything about the game at all? Like, at all. So you have this loading screen in the sky that turns into a flame ball flying around and then, oh, it's Contra. They're coming. This was at E3 2011, and eight years later, oh man, this game must be something else if it's taken this long. Didn't help this was the most generic way you could announce a game. And the only thing that made this scream Contra? 
was the Contra logo? So not only did that game never come out, but there was nothing to discern from this trailer. But what about trailers that have everything to discern from, but aren't really the game at all? Killzone 2, that was fake. This was shown in 2005 to hype up the PS3. It was made to look like it was actual gameplay. It wasn't like a cinematic CGI trailer, it was more so a CGI gameplay trailer. Some people looked at this back then and assumed this was real life gameplay. Oh, how far we've come. To be fair, we can finally achieve graphics like this now. Problem was, this was shown 14 years ago and can be labeled as my favorite pastime. False advertising. That's a major issue when trailers are misleading, and that's one of the biggest problems with game trailers. Many primarily use CGI or builds of the game that look and run much better than the final versions to swoon over consumers. Like that Dead Island reveal is one of the best trailers ever but isn't the most indicative of what you get with the final package? And then when it's time to actually release some games, some developers realize, oh wow, we were lying. They have to end up heavily downgrading the game to release it before their deadline or for it to work smoothly on consoles. Watch Dogs is an example everybody likes to jump to, how the initial reveal and demos of the game painted it in a much better light. When it was revealed at E3 2012, people were impressed and expressed that they wouldn't like the game if at release it looked a bit different and slightly downgraded compared to the reveal Ubisoft to you swine. I feel like people were a bit too harsh on Watch Dogs. It isn't a bad game and it still looks pretty decent today. It's just with a bunch of bugs and glitches at launch and with it being touted as a true next-gen experience, even though they released it on last-gen machines as well, it still disappointed people who were expecting it to be a much more mind-blowing experience when in reality, it was a pretty typical Ubisoft game. I mean, now I'll think twice before booking Ubisoft to kid or a grad party. Their stuff when advertised doesn't always equal their final product. But Watch Dogs got a lot of heat for its amazing reveal and ho-hum release. And I don't think it was completely justified. Now, one thing I noticed and not enough people give Watch Dogs credit for is that it has a finalized title. Bad reveals aren't limited to games, consoles get them too. I'm sure you've heard of the third console curse at this point, where a company's third system is a complete disaster. The PlayStation 3, the Sega Saturn, but the Xbox One is the best example of this in the past decade. Now you may say the Wii U's reveal was significantly worse, and that is debatable, but you may also say, wait, the Wii U wasn't Nintendo's third console, and you're right. It was their second third console. But with the Wii U, that system's reveal didn't anger people, it just confused them. The Xbox One, now this console was revealed in May of 2013 and it was filled with Skype on my TV, TV on my TV, using Connect with my TV, and Call of Duty Ghosts. Damn, what a gaming platform. This reveal was incredibly tone deaf and was aimed at casual consumers who didn't care about tuning into a live stream revealing the next Xbox. To the audience who actually cared enough to watch an Xbox reveal event, this announcement was boring and uninteresting to almost every viewer. And not only only that, but more news came out afterwards about how the console wouldn't support used games, would require an internet connection periodically, and required connect. This reveal alone confirmed Microsoft's place in anywhere but first in the console wars this generation. That's the major reason why the PS4 is in a distant first place compared to the Xbox One. With the Wii U, I mean this reveal was so confusing Nintendo decided to re-reveal the Wii U at the following E3. That didn't help things, but at least this reveal didn't cause anger. They just didn't show the console. I mean, they kinda did, but it was blurry in the distance every time it was on screen. They focused so much on the controller that people assumed that's all the Wii U was. A controller for the Wii. Couple that with underwhelming games and the Wii U, yeah, I'd say that was a fairly bad reveal. In terms of more modern stuff, Fallout 76, yeah, they built up to a formal reveal trailer of the game where it looked like pretty much another Bethesda Fallout. People were excited. And then rumors floated around about it being online only, and Todd Howard went up on stage at E3 2018, said a few swear words, and charmed everybody into realizing by the end of it all, I still didn't know what the hell Fallout 76 was. I'd consider that a botched reveal. I mean, that's like if Nintendo put out a CGI Mario Kart trailer, you'd say, oh, it's a Mario Kart game, and then the game comes out and it's an overhead racing game. Like, they specifically reeled people in who wanted a traditional Fallout game by not making it clear at all what the hell the game was in its reveal, making it seem as if it's a traditional Fallout game. They also revealed two new games in the works after talking about Fallout 76, Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6. No gameplay shown, just crazy short animated teasers with logos. Now, Starfield, I'm okay with saying that was a bad reveal. That's a brand new IP, so showing space and then a logo means nothing to me. At least the Contra game from 2011, I mean, I, I know what Contra is. It's fairly understandable to do a teaser like this for a pre-existing franchise. Just saying that a new entry is in the works is enough sometimes. But Starfield, man, that's a new game. Just showing a logo is stupid in my opinion. It means nothing to me. Now, disappointment is one thing you really want to ensure doesn't happen during a reveal. But it's really hard when fans expect or want one thing, and Nintendo does this instead. 
2015 to 2016 was a bad era for Nintendo reveals as they kept doing the unthinkable and made bad games and announcements of said games. Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, picture this, everybody wants a new Animal Crossing game for the Wii U at E3 2015, this appears on screen. Oh wow, Animal Crossing Amiibo being scanned on the Wii U, that must mean never mind. Like come on, you put these two things on screen and you don't expect people to think you're about to reveal a real Animal Crossing game for Wii U. Instead an Animal Crossing party game is revealed, and not just any Animal Crossing party party game, a bad one. Metroid Prime Federation Force fell victim to being revealed at one of the worst times for Metroid fans. They reveal a game called Blast Ball during the Nintendo World Championships 2015, and then reveal that game to be a part of a new Metroid Prime spin-off a couple days later during their E3 presentation. So that just sort of proves that this Metroid Prime game is generic looking enough to be shown off as anything but a Metroid Prime game. And on top of that, the first Metroid we get after 5 years and the first Metroid Prime in 8 years is a spin-off on the 3DS. Yes, the best place for a multiplayer first-person shooter. Now, recently we have gotten the sheer beauty of Valve announcing Artifact. After not making a major title in years, you know, something people really wanted from Valve, they just barf out some card game based on Dota 2 and it caught a reaction all right. This wasn't what people wanted from Valve, especially because this wasn't a game in the same field as stuff like Portal, Half-Life, Left 4 Dead. Uh, this was a cash grab. It's almost like they planned such a negative reaction. All these mysterious visuals and then blam, a logo. With the Dota card game slowly fading in under it. A similar story with Diablo Immortal. Uh, fans wanted a new Diablo. Blizzard said, we got a new Diablo for you, all right? Phone Diablo, it's the next best thing. Next to having a finalized title. Remember when they revealed Pokemon Sun and Moon for the first time? Yeah, that's when they didn't reveal Pokemon Sun and Moon. They had this live presentation that was seven minutes long just to show off a retrospective trailer of Pokemon throughout the years, and then they just smacked some Sun and Moon logos on the screen, which were leaked beforehand. Classic leaks happening right before a reveal and ruining the surprise in the entire context of the reveal trailer. Yeah, those are the best. Now, a bad reveal doesn't always mean a bad game comes out of it. A Wind Waker famously got a ton of criticism when it was initially announced. Uh, people wanted a more realistic, darker Zelda, something in line with a next-gen Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, and this tech demo Nintendo showed off for the GameCube. Instead, we got fun colors and shapes, and people weren't happy, but it turned out to be an amazing game. The original Metroid Prime initially had a similar reaction. Uh, people were concerned when they first saw it at Space World 2000, but it changed significantly by its release and became one of the greatest games of all time, look at that. Now, in terms of of good reveals, I think the best kinds of introductions to video games are surprising, exciting, and self-aware. Now what do I mean by self-aware? What I mean by that is I love it when you can see how the developer knows what they have, they know what fans want, they know exactly how to unveil their product. Easy example is Smash Brothers Ultimate's roster reveal at E3 2018. They start off with the standard characters you'd expect to see, but then they get a little wilder. Sonic and Mewtwo revealed right from the start, all right. Ice Climbers are back, all right, everybody expected that, good for them. Pokemon Trainer back after being cut from Smash 3DS and Wii U, well, I didn't expect that. The DLC newcomers from Smash 3DS and Wii U as well, yeah, they're here too. Oh, Jesus Christ, Snake from Brawl, everybody is here. What does that mean, f***ing Pichu? They knew the exact order to reveal each character, and they knew Snake would garner a huge reaction and then they followed up by confirming Pichu, the character that really made everybody realize, oh, they're really bringing back everybody. I mean, Wolf was one of the final characters revealed in this trailer because he was one of the most requested DLC characters in Smash 3DS and Wii U. And hey, speaking of Smash Brothers for 3DS and Wii U, that had some of the best trailers in the field, especially the reveal. It does the whole fake out introduction with Animal Crossing, cuts to all the major franchises crossing over and then 3DS gameplay, oh damn, Wii U visuals now, Villager, shitty names. Mega Man! Now, some people may say the Brawl trailer was better than this, and that's totally fair. I love how it starts off with the melee visuals and then everybody transforms into their much grittier, grosser Brawl models. Tons of newcomers revealed ending off with Snake from Metal Gear joining. Just think, if Snake can be in Smash Brothers, you can do anything. But before this, we had Melee's reveal, where you can just hear how excited the audience was. They pretty much just played the opening movie, and seeing all these characters in beautiful CG and then in-game graphics that weren't too much worse made for an incredible reveal. This was the GameCube debut for a lot of these characters, so to see them all in such an amazing crossover fighter with silky smooth visuals for the first time must have been mind-blowing. I wasn't there, but God knows, if they reveal Super Smash Bros. Melee for the first time again anytime soon, I will be. Just because Wind Waker was initially met with a negative reception doesn't mean all Zelda games were, oh god no. Obviously, one of the greatest reveals of all time was Twilight Princess at E3 2004. Keep in mind, this was a few years after the Wind Waker debacle, so because of that game's initial criticism, that made this reveal 
that much more impactful. Just as the press conference was wrapping up, a new trailer starts playing with Conan the Barbarian music, the same music that played in an Ocarina of Time trailer. As the music starts building up, Link comes in whipping out his sword gameplay as shown confirming that yeah, Nintendo listened. Miyamoto appears on stage with a sword and shield, I mean you can't get much crazier than that. This is easily the wildest a crowd has ever gotten with a video game reveal, let alone a Nintendo one. But you know, I really liked how Breath of the Wild was revealed. Not nearly as epic, but Eiji Anuma just proudly showing how the game will look and showing a scene of Link fleeing from a guardian gave you enough of a taste. Just him snapping his fingers to reveal what an open world HD Zelda game would look like made my jaw drop. Of course, who the hell knew what this was all about at the time? We really didn't have any context and a bunch of people thought Link was a girl. 2015, yeah, can't wait for that. Now, when the PlayStation 4 was officially announced, Sony held this conference where they spent a solid four years describing everything they could about the console without actually showing the console. But one thing I will always remember with this reveal was the introduction. They started things off with a video with this intense music. Sony didn't officially say they were revealing the PS4 at this thing, they just said they were discussing the future of PlayStation, which we all knew this was going to be the PlayStation 4. But this right here, when they go P, S, and then it cuts out before the number and plays this retrospective video about PlayStation. I always really like that moment and I never see anybody talking about it. But a good reveal doesn't always mean a good game comes out of it. Metroid Other M was revealed at E3 2009 and it was an incredible way to end a pretty mediocre show. Like, this was Casual's Corner. Women's Murder Club Games of Passion had a trailer featured at the conference, huh? What? Why? But then Nintendo kind of threw this and Super Mario Galaxy 2 at the very end like they were throwing a bone to their core fans and Metroid Other M looked amazing. This especially with it being the trailer to end the show. Now, I personally stand by the fact that Other M isn't that bad. Most of the badness comes from the story and characters, and the gameplay is pretty decent. But this game is a prime example of good reveal turned sour by the game's final release. I'd say some of the most satisfying reveals are definitely those of games that have been requested forever. The Final Fantasy VII Remake, Kingdom Hearts 3, Killer Instinct, Shenmue 3. And then it sunk into me that they were just announcing the Kickstarter for the game, not the actual game at Sony's conference. That was sort of bogus. As much as I complained about The Last of Us 2's Tent and Banjo trailer, the initial unveil was a phenomenal introduction to Part 2. One of those things where we were all like, yeah, this is Last of Us. Yeah, this is Last of Us. This is Last of Us. Even with the game's release far off from when it initially debuted, the trailer gave you so much to work off of. This told you so much, yet not a lot at the same time. Okay, I hate this little factoid about myself. But I kind of like the Halo reveal trailers ever since Halo 4. Like yeah, 343 Industries is at a sloppy record with Halo, but I like these trailers for their element of surprise, like oh man, who knows what this is and blam, Master Chief is here. I like that because it always gives these trailers a sense of oh! The stupidest one though is the Halo 5 teaser. I mean, this was basically just to confirm Halo was gonna be on Xbox One and this scene was never in Halo 5. And why does Master Chief need a cloak? He has armor. Cause they wanted the big reveal that, oh, it's Halo. They're pretty cheap reveals, but they always lead to fun reactions. And of course, there are the reveals that are responses to recent events. I'm mainly looking at Death Stranding and Mighty Number no. 9. These games were revealed after Hideo Kojima and Keiji Inafune had pretty sour split ups from their respective companies. And when they revealed their first games on their own, people went insane for Death Stranding and people went insane for the Mighty Number no. 9 Kickstarter and then justifiably went insane after it was released. Well, those were just some historic reveals in gaming, but what about the stuff that happens afterwards? Sometimes it's nothing special, a few trailers here and there, and then boom, release. But hey, sometimes you get the best trailer of them all randomly thrown in there after the reveal. One of my favorite trailers of all time is the Breath of the Wild trailer during the Nintendo Switch presentation 2017. That had some of the greatest music and editing ever to grace a video game trailer. Everything was so epic and emotional, it was perfect. We get a title change sometimes. Maybe they reveal the game with a working title and logo with an intern screaming, hey man, whip out that Times New Roman font, we got a logo to make. Sometimes the entire identity of a game changes during this phase. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem was revealed for the Wii U in 2013 and didn't appear again until 2015 where it became not bad. Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE, pretty much an original game with elements from SMT and Fire Emblem thrown in there. Yes, exactly what I was expecting from this teaser. Conker's Bad Fur Day famously debuted as Conker's Quest, a typical family friendly platformer until it became this mature deformity. Metal Gear Solid 5 wasn't announced as Metal Gear Solid 5. Hideo Kojima was pulling a funny on us all and announced the Phantom Pain as an original game and then later revealed, whoops, it was actually Metal Gear Solid 5. A lot can change for better or for worse. And many times new little tidbits about the product are revealed that make things a little less appealing. I pray for anybody that experiences anything like the Shame Sony experience when they announced the Vita would be using AT&T for their 3G model. And we'll be partnering with AT&T as the exclusive carrier for PlayStation Vita in United States.
first impressions are crucial, but even if they're stifled a bit, a trailer in the middle of the build-up can totally change public opinion. Super Mario 3D World was much more well received once the second trailer came out, and Bloodstained changed up its art style for the best after a lukewarm reception. Changes are made all the time up until release. The Xbox One backtracked on many of the features people felt less than stellar about. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 got a new art style for some reason a month before release. And when that release day finally hits, it can be either the most magical thing ever, or absolutely shrouded in disappointment. It's interesting to see how much reception may change from the initial reveal. A lot of the time, we can all kind of tell if a game is going to stink a little bit. I understand you have to wait until a game is finished and you've played it to fully form an opinion, but we all kind of knew that Days Gone was going to be pretty whatever, Crackdown 3 wasn't going to be all too hot, and Mighty Number no. 9. A lot of us have become well versed in the general marketing language of companies, and when little is said about a product before release, that's probably not good. You can see trouble brewing from a mile away, but to be proven wrong or to get exactly what you wanted is always a joy. The build-up is important because they have to know exactly when to release more information. When talk is dying down, here's a new trailer. The reveal and build-up needs to be timed well, exciting, and not tone deaf. And for some games, that's difficult for numerous reasons. The marketing people may not get the target demographic, they may not get what fans truly want to see from trailers, which is why it's so special to see Smash Brothers reveals that poke fun at things really only fans get. To see Twilight Princess get revealed after Wind Waker, to have the PS4 be revealed to play used games after the Xbox One was initially confirmed not to. To see Death Stranding get revealed after Kojima left Konami, and to see gameplay of it. It's everything I wanted. It's one of the most memorable experiences to have as a fan, for better or for worse. Waiting for new information, counting the days till the release, getting a final name, holy sh**. Okay, I'm a mess. My name's Ben and we'll figure it out later, Limbo, ever since I was born. I don't know how to deal with this. I've been going off with a fucking rocker. And just to show you how insane I've been lately... I ate here!